Good evening. The Rails to Trails board has asked me if I would be willing to talk about my Great American Rail Trail ride last summer and show some pictures. But since I wrote reports over 20 days and sent over 300 pictures, most of which you people have probably already seen and read, and since many of you are probably tired of sitting at home, and since Rails to Trails encourages visiting trails using masks and social distancing, I thought you might be thinking about visiting a new trail this summer. I've decided to highlight these 10 trails, the longer sections of trails that the Great American Rail Trail uses between Washington DC and the Mississippi River, long sections that you could ride for a day or more. The Great American Rail Trail will be 3,700 miles when complete, and it's now more than 52% complete. If you have questions at any time during tonight, you can type them into the chat box, and at the end of the program, Sue or Don will read the questions back to me and I'll attempt to answer them. The slides from tonight's program will be posted on the RTWC website. The first trail that I'd like to talk about is the CNO Canal Towpath. It goes from Washington, D.C. to Cumberland, Maryland, and is 184 and a half miles long. It's very scenic and shaded. The surface is crushed stone or sometimes dirt, and in the more remote sections, there can be tree roots and mud puddles sometimes. However, the positive side is that there are no highway crossings. All the highways cross overhead on bridges, so you mostly don't have to deal with uh, very little car traffic. There are historic canal locks and aqueducts. The visitor centers could be closed this summer due to COVID. I'm not sure what they're planning to do yet. The picture at the left is the big slack water. During canal times, the canal boats would load their mule onto the boat and float down the river to dam number four and into the guard lock. A few years ago, the National Park Service added this uh, concrete um, walkway along the side of the Potomac River against the cliff. Um, historically, that had never been there and you would have to detour on roads around this section up until a few years ago. It's a very beautiful section. You're right on the Potomac River. The picture at the right is the Paw Paw Tunnel. It's the only tunnel on the canal. Um, it's near Paw Paw, West Virginia. Um, the tunnel is open, but the area directly behind the photographer, uh, the downstream entrance to the tunnel, may be closed this summer. The National Park Service has been dealing with landslides in the area and they've been working on that. Even if the section of towpath behind the photographer is closed, there is a hiking trail that goes up over the hill that you see in the photograph. And you can walk your bike um, up and over that and bypass this section of the tunnel if needed. The Great Allegheny Passage, known as the Gap Trail, is 150 miles long. It connects directly to the CNO at Cumberland, Maryland, and continues on to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The surface is crushed stone, but it's generally a better surface than the CNO is. But there are road crossings on it. The trail at the Pittsburgh end is asphalt, but you need to know which trail to take in the Pittsburgh area to get to Point Park which is where the Monongahela and the Allegheny Rivers meet to form the start of the Ohio River. Both the CNO and the Gap are popular, and while lodging is available, um, it's quite limited because many of the towns are small and they fill up quickly. The picture at the left is the Eastern Continental Divide. It's the high point on the trail between Pittsburgh and um, Washington. It's also the high point on the trail between um, DC and the Mississippi River. The reason it's called the Continental Eastern Continental Divide is that 
all the water behind the photographer runs to the Atlantic Ocean and all the water on the other side of the bridge in the picture runs to the Mississippi River. The picture at the right is the Salisbury Viaduct. It's a three quarter mile former railroad bridge, the Western Maryland Railroad, and it crosses the entire valley, um, crossing the US 219, the Castleman River, and the CSX Railroad. The Ohio Erie Trail runs from Cleveland to Columbus to Cincinnati and is 326 miles long. One thing that you might not be aware of is that Rails to Trails board member Becky Jewell was instrumental in getting the Heartland Trail section from Clinton to Marshallville to Oroville south to Fredericksburg when it's eventually completed, included on the Great American Rail Trail route. There are still several road gaps on the Hyatt Erie Trail, and the largest one is in Wayne County. But the Hyatt Erie Trail has uh, directional signs both on roads and on trails to uh, keep you on track if you're trying to follow the Hyatt Erie. Everything south of Orville is asphalt. Two suggestions of places that you might want to go to ride. Um, one would be the Hyatt Erie, would be the Little Miami Trail in Xenia. If you have not been to Xenia, there are five trails that come into Xenia from different directions. You could base in Xenia and five for five days, you could ride a different direction on a trail each day out and back. Another place that you might be interested in visiting if you haven't uh, ridden it yet would be the Badaw Pass section of the Holmes County Trail. It goes from Glenmont to Brinkhaven and you can continue on to Danville and beyond if you wanted to. The Badaw section of the trail um, opened two or three years ago and if you haven't ridden it that's somewhere close to home that you might want to try to experience. The Cardinal Greenway is 62 miles long and goes from Richmond, Indiana to beyond Marion, Indiana. But there's a 15 mile road gap between Gaston and Jonesboro, meaning that the Cardinal Greenway is built in two different sections. At the Marion end of the trail, there's a direct connection to the Sweetser Switch Trail, which is four miles long. Sweetser being a small railroad community in Indiana. Then at the end of that, there's a direct connection to the Converse Trail, which is two miles long. All of these trails are asphalt. The total miles, if you ride the 15 mile road gap, it would be 83 miles total one way. The picture on the right is the Weiser Street Depot in Muncie. Muncie being the home of the Ball Canning Jar Factory. Um, Ball is a family name of the company, um, like the um, Smuckers is the name, family name of the J.M. Smucker Company. And Muncie is also the home to Ball State University, um, the family being instrumental in getting that university started. The Nickel Plate Trail is 37 miles long and runs from Kokomo, Indiana to Rochester, Indiana. If you look at the picture um, of the trail map, Kokomo is at the bottom of the map and Rochester is at the top. Peru is about in the middle of the map and at Peru there's an approximate two mile gap um, where there's no trail all the way through Peru. Um, you need to follow streets to get through the trail, get to connect to the trail uh, to continue on to Rochester. In the future, the Great American Rail Trail 
will come from Converse, which was in the last slide. It'll continue west to Bunker Hill, which is south of Peru on the Nickel Plate Trail. The trail is all asphalt and um, it's fairly open, meaning there's not a lot of shade on it. The Erie Lackawanna Trail um, starts in Crown Point, Indiana, and that is where I started my ride last summer. It has a beautiful trailhead, and you can see in the picture at the right the reproduction water tower that's at the trailhead. The Great American Rail Trail only uses two miles of the Erie Lackawanna before it uh, switches over to the um, Pensy Greenway Trail. However, the Erie Lackawanna continues 17 miles toward Chicago and ends in the suburbs of Chicago. There are many uh, trails in the Chicago area, so if you were to um, go out there, there would be multiple trail opportunities to ride in the Chicago area. On the map, the uh, Erie Lackawanna Trail starts at Crown Point in the lower right hand corner and continues diagonally up through the map. There was also a second railroad in Crown Point being the Pennsylvania Railroad and you can see the um, to the left of the Erie Lackawanna Trail there's another red line that doesn't continue down into Crown Point as yet and that's the Pensy Greenway Trail. The Pensy Greenway starts south of Shurville, Indiana and runs to Calumet City, Illinois, about 15 miles long. On Trail Link, the trail map shows a road gap at Hartsdale, but that gap is no longer a gap. Uh, the new trail connection has been completed and I rode it last summer. In Munster, Indiana, the trail is a wide sidewalk um, through town and food and lodging are both available there. The Pensy Greenway in the picture at the right has a arch over the trail um, at the state line where the trail crosses from Indiana into Illinois. The state line is a due north-south line and the trail runs on an angle from the southeast to the northwest. The trail surface is asphalt the entire way. The INM Canal State Trail. The INM stands for Illinois River and Lake Michigan. It's about 80 miles long and starts near Chicago and runs to LaSalle, Illinois with two road gaps in it. The Great American Rail Trail section is about 60 miles long and starts west of Joliet, Illinois. So if you were to start at the Joliet point and continue west, the trail is continuous to LaSalle with the exception of a missing aqueduct at uh, Morris, Illinois. There's about a one to two mile road gap from Morris to Gephardt Woods State Park. It's an unmarked detour, but um, it's fairly easy to uh, figure out. The surface is crushed stone or dirt. Some of the sections are single track. And while there are some watered sections of the canal, mostly the canal bed is dry, like the CNO Canal. The Hennepin Canal is 105 miles total, and it's a three-legged trail. Uh, the canal is completely watered with water flowing from Rock Falls in the north, south to the midpoint of the east-west trail section. The Great American Rail Trail uses the east-west section from Bureau Junction, Illinois to Kelowna, Illinois. The 
and that section is 63 miles long. If you like to follow a watered canal, this is it, but there's not much shade on it. The surface of the canal towpath is um, chip and seal or hard crushed stone and has a very good surface. It's better than the INM surface. Um, the canal does not go through many towns but skirts most of them. And if you um, need services like food, water, or lodging, you would need to use roads to get to those towns. There is camping at um, a half a dozen or so locations along the trail. Each of these um, camping spots has a pit toilet built in, but there are no other services there. There is road access to each of these camping sites. And um, if you were to um, have someone meet you there with an RV, um, you could camp in your RV, although there are no hookups. There is a charge for these campgrounds and there will be a ranger that comes around and collects the money for those. If the ranger does not show up, you don't owe anything. Uh, additionally, there are two uh, commercial campgrounds with full RV hookups um, and showers available along the canal with direct access to the canal. The Great River Trail is 63 miles long from Savannah, Illinois, near the Wisconsin border, to south of Rock Island, Illinois. Much of the trail is on the Mississippi River levee, um, but going through the cities, it's a wide sidewalk uh, that the trail is marked. Um, the picture at the lower right shows um, how you're on top of the levee and have a good view of the Mississippi River much of the time. The picture at the upper right, um, there are signposts every so often and if you're crossing uh, to Davenport, Iowa, you need to um, note where the sign is to cross over. I missed the sign and got too far south and had to turn around and come back um, to make my connection. Um, the, this is the Quad Cities area of Moline and Rock Island, Illinois, and Battendorf and Davenport, Iowa. The Great American Rail Trail only uses eight of these miles, but there's a good trail network on most both sides of the Mississippi River. At Moline, Illinois, there's a water taxi that's available about every half an hour that can take you across the river um, and you would pay for that service. This is the Government Arsenal Bridge at Rock Island and it's free to cross um, so you can explore the Iowa side of the river also. On the Iowa side, there are 14 miles of trail at Davenport, um, and the total mileage on both sides of the river in, in this area is 77 miles. This is the location of the first railroad bridge across the Mississippi, although this is not the original bridge. On the lower right is where the cars go. On the lower left is where the bicycles and pedestrians go. And the upper level is the railroad. And you can see in the picture that there's currently a train on the bridge up there. Underneath the bridge is the um, arsenal locks and uh, river boats push barges up and down the river um, through these locks at this point. There are lots of good trails to explore, and I hope I've given you some ideas. I hope that you can have the opportunity uh, to experience a new trail soon. At this time, we will attempt to answer any questions that you might have.